everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Cooligans <laughs> Podcast. Welcome to the show. That's right. My name is Joey. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What would you do if we did the whole episode and didn't reference it? We got to do a full episode in, uh, you know, uh, early 1990s. K- Casey Kasem, yeah. you know. Uh, All right. We've got a letter. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Stacy in Wisconsin. We- says, Dave, I miss you. Uh, welcome. Easy Cooligans, buddy. Nah, bro. It's ain't Casey Kasem. Nah. Uh, nice little it's old. It's Blasey Blasem. <laughs> bro, we'll hit you with them old ass references, yeah. bro. I, I don't even know what that is, bro. <laughs> I so genuinely young. do not know who Casey Kasem Casey is. Casey Kasem was a. Like, He's that voice. That we were voice. Doing. That okay, old okay. radio personality. That the, the, I, I, He might have invented that voice. I okay. don't even know. But he literally was on the radio from like when it was invented <laughs> until like 2003. <laughs> I'm not making that up. He was like 90 years old and he's like, hey, a lot from hollywood yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. uh so yeah that is uh that's that dude but he is um uh, yeah he's he's not what today's show is about <laughs> because uh we are the cooligans my name is christian polanco and i'm a Ale- no i'm alexis Guerrero. <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh we are we're excited about uh uh today's uh speak for yourself bro all right just me just me <laughs> and you don't know if i'm excited for nothing Al- alexis ain't excited nah. Miguel- miguelito ain't excited nah, nobody excited. <laughs> we got okay. cold hearts out here <laughs> <laughs> because it is it is blazingly hot. Oh my god! In New York City today, I'm sure in uh, other parts of the country as well. But we're not really used to this, uh, you know, above 90 degree weather every single day. What's the opposite of brick? Is it just dumb hot? <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have an opposite of brick. Nah, we need scorching something. I mean, yeah, there's not anything it's that stucco. We need <laughs> yeah. we, we need something, bro. It, it's um For those of you who don't know, brick means extremely cold in right, New York terminology. In New, New York slang, uh but no, when it's just hot, the, the, we got to it's 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 zapping the energy out of us. Actually, I was walking outside. It's giving energy to certain <laughs> certain <laughs> folks. Yeah, in this yeah. City. The, the mentally deranged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find they find strength in if this energy. If you enjoy smoking rocks, <laughs> all of a sudden you are ready to go. Isn't that something like in in Dragon Ball Z? Do you watch Dragon Ball Z? I they do not, crack on one. Dragon Ball no, Z. No, they do. This it's some, cracking Ball I, Z. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Goku needs to get like power from the sun or something like that. Like uh, that's uh, that's how. I feel some people in New York are, are behaving. Because you know, I, I read a theory and it's not so much as a theory. Apparently it's true. I, I can't prove it because I don't know anything. <laughs> it's not but, a theory. It's, it's completely <laughs> no, but it's like true a, now. It's, like a, it's true, but like there's no, it, it's not like documented anywhere because okay. you can't. That Spider-Man was originally about, like the, the fact that he can spray uh, web? web. It was actually skeet. How else? I don't want to swear in the first what, seven minutes. No, um, jizz. Can no. you say jizz? <laughs> so you got through fine the first time. You're I like, tried my heart. <laughs> I love whenever I swear, Mike just has You're to like, go and I, write the time. Wait, no, can I say spunk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what's, the, what's the word? Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> it was about a teenager, <laughs> you know, drilling for white gold. <laughs> um, I've never heard that. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know, know why, <laughs> what I don't version know. of Spider Man that yeah, was. No, <laughs> that's what the, the character is like, sort of like, none of it is actually real like it started with like it was supposed to be like fantasy and like you know he was was spider-man originally hentai what yeah. are you about? <laughs> I, think, I think someone might have lied to you like, yeah no I, in fact if you look at it some of the original ones they were drawn in japan and whenever he sprays web it's it's digitized it's pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> uh well you know it's Sp- a true theory spider-man is an american uh cartoon obviously uh, the, <laughs> the joke was so i could say pixelated. got it got it no, no i'm glad i'm glad but you know the nerd in me wouldn't allow <laughs> well actually <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't know anything Stop it. <laughs> Stop talking about <laughs> Spider-Man. He's a great boy. Uh, well, this is a terrible transition into talking about our guest today. We are going to be joined by uh, uh, CEO of the new San Diego franchise, Tom Penn, uh, mm. will be talking to us in just a little bit. You uh, know what? I'll ask him his theory about Spider-Man. <laughs> what he thinks about Spider-Man. <laughs> you think it was Spunk? <laughs> bro, come on, bro. Was it not or not? <laughs> it feels like it could have been, right? 
<laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> um, we don't ask. Them that. <laughs> they don't ask you this on extra time. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Uh, but no, uh, a lot to go over today before we talk to Tom. Uh, as a reminder, make sure if you're watching on if you're watching on YouTube, uh, some people enjoy looking at our, our pretty faces. Mm. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you if you're watching this. And sometimes you want to tune into the podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the Coolians Podcast on all platforms, uh, uh, whether you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Uh, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts as well. We always appreciate that. Too. Right now, if you can hear our voices and or see our faces, hit the button you're supposed to hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it. It's very simple. I like so, it. And you too can shoe web. No. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the uh, so w- we should begin with um, the. Where should we begin? Uh, with El Tráfico. Let's okay. start there because uh, obviously uh, that happened uh, what on Tuesday. Uh, Huge uh, Independence Day at the Rose Bowl. Eighty-two thousand people. Right, and we look. We have a we have a picture. I have a picture in front of me of a, a former guest of the show, Eli Eli Lesser. You can clearly see he drips some mustard on his shirt. And <laughs> <it off. laughs> he, is, <laughs> he is very very happy about uh, his team uh, winning this game. Uh, uh, you know, he's obviously a big LA Galaxy fan. Um, but no, man, this was. Uh, I, I think we we have to start, but because I I don't know if it if an an apology is in order. I don't think so. Because literally one of our one of our most viral. Clips Clips. People telling me that I don't watch the game. Yeah, you don't know ball, right? <laughs> because because you brought in a player to get assists, <laughs> and instead of just cutting up defenders, he wasn't getting assists. But because you only watch that part of it, you think, wow, he's good. And here's what I've also said. I've also said, we're talking about Ricky Pooj, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ricky Pooj is the most talented player on the pitch most nights. Without a doubt. But is he the best player? He hasn't been this season. He's shown flashes of being a very talented player, but he hasn't done the job. If you're a striker, I don't care about your fancy footwork. Get them goals. Mm -hmm. If you are the creative midfielder, if you are supposed to be the best creative midfielder in the league, then where are them assists, bro? Right, but then people would argue if if Ricky Pooch is doing all this fancy footwork and gets the ball to someone who is supposed to score and can't, mm-hmm. how's that on him to not get the assist? It's not like we haven't talked about the coach, Greg Vanny. Okay, clearly no, 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 hasn't no. built. But there's there's more than one reason. You can't I mean, just look, say, yeah, well, yeah. he's fine because he's <laughs> he still passes the ball. If it if that doesn't end up going in goal, then maybe it wasn't the right pass. Okay, and which maybe is, you got to stop making some dusty ass passes. <laughs> guess what? You kind of did, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he, he heard what we said. Yeah, he was involved in both goals, assisted one and scored the Look, other. He was he was mad at uh, us. I yeah. guess he was mad at Chiellini for calling him a payaso, mm-hmm. right? A clown. And uh, you know he's taking all the all the negativity and hate right. he is getting uh, on social media and using it just for something productive. Yeah. And in that game against LAFC, he looked like a, a different man. Well, this is look. So did Douglas Costa. Douglas Costa looked Douglas great. Douglas Costa, where where has where have you been, dog? <laughs> and this is my point, my man. Maybe these dudes only show up for big games, <laughs> and that's not good. Okay, I, I that outside of the boot pass to, to to Taylor Booth, saucy man. I'm like, yo, this is better than the 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 standard Douglas Costa red card that he gets <laughs> yeah. every game. You see what happens <laughs> when you don't punch people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, it's look, uh, LA Galaxy need desperately needed. They kind of uh, both did. They kind of both did. Yeah. LAFC, they're, they're, what is it? Ten games where it's uh, they've I won. What the I down is. bad. I they've lost seven out of ten or something yeah. like yeah. that. Uh, something not wrong. a good look. Uh, L- oh, L- they got LA Galaxy has seven points in their last five prior to this game. Mm-hmm. LAFC has seven points in their last eleven. Yeah. Wow. So not great. It's not a good look. Uh, a little bit of a slump. Uh, mm-hmm. but you would still expect. Uh, I'm gonna double check if that's eleven. I know that's that. You would expect so LAFC there. to uh, to turn things around. No, it is. 11. But this was. Uh, you was know. Is that right? Yeah. There you go. Look, Look the, at that. The put that in your little comments. <laughs> overall, just even um, sort of the the I don't know the meaning of this game. It was this uh, now the most attended MLS game ever, eighty two thousand one hundred and ten, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And by the way, that's without Messi, bro. No, never even heard of that guy. That there guy. was no Messi involved in this game, and we broke a record. So that was great to you see. You think Messi? 
could get a hundred thousand people to a game. Oh yeah. Oh my god. One hundred percent. I went in the U.S. The, the yeah. first game I went to. Uh, I say Inter Miami play a game in 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 Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, remember when they wanted to do the Clasico yeah, in, in, in the, the U.S. in the U.S. and everyone was like, "Oh, you can't do that. We have dignity in our league. We got none of that in ours, baby. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> they didn't write dignity in yeah. the Constitution. Dude, they, you can't buy a whip with dignity. <laughs> <laughs> we okay. all want it. Bro. You see how awful they treated people based <laughs> yeah. on that Constitution? Yeah, ew, no, dog. America ain't about that. Nah, we ain't got none of that, bro. <laughs> Shut up, broke boys. <laughs> we out here trying to get this guap. We up in the big C, which is capitalism <laughs> out here, dog. <laughs> Yo, the only S I know got a dash through it, bro. Anyway, Cut man. Cut the crap, bro. I would do we. Yo, Messi, the next, the first in a Miami game. Do it in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, bro. <laughs> uh, wow, let them know what they're missing. Um, bro, a little mid-season friendly with Al Nasser. <laughs> well, that's you know what's funny. I I read um, Pele's book and he talked a lot. He of, suggested the same thing. No, in no, Miami. Pe no Pele, you know the a lot of the. Uh, he was like a traveling circus, bro. Santos, they were like, yo, let's let's get them. They they played ev in every European yeah. country. That so, sometimes people are like, oh, well, Pele never played in Europe and blah blah blah. Pele bro. played every European team, every European country. Uh, so he, that's what, even when, like, so during World Cups, he'd be like, oh, I know these fools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I play these guys. <laughs> hey, aren't these the guys I cut up in a friendly <laughs> when I still wasn't getting paid, but everybody but, else but, was? Uh, you know, one of the first games I ever went to was um, David Beckham's first um, first game in the U.S. Mm -hmm. when, Against Pele? Damn. Damn bro. Let that dude rest, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Elvis, like, get up, get up to work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you need Just to shoot perform. him with adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's uh, not too far from the truth. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but but David Beckham um, in that first game, it was England against Colombia, and it was at Giant Stadium, and uh, it was probably it wasn't. I, I remember it wasn't sold out, but it was like easily like. Almost 60,000 people. I, no, the, I remember oh, the fanfare of it, like the yeah. traffic and everything. Yeah. Right, right, right. So it was just a, um, you know, so uh, like it's just an example of like e even like Beckham got close to selling out Giant Stadium and people just wanted to essentially just see him. Um, but Messi, it would be, it would, would, there would, there's not enough. There's not enough seats. That's what, like sure. him. Even They're talking about playing some of the games in the Dolphins. They stadium. have to. They have to. They have to really, really consider that. Also, because why are you gonna leave that money on the table? No, dude. Jorge Mas is like on the phone with his friend Jeff Bezos. Like, <laughs> send me all the cash machines you have. <laughs> <laughs> the, what, the little shooting, the guns no, that you have. <laughs> Bro, it's gonna it's gonna look like Tony Montana is here, bro. So um, no, but look, I, I think it, it, it's uh, it's a, a a huge moment for uh, for MLS and American soccer to have. Um, bro, bleed this thing dry. <laughs> okay. Messi has what two years left? <laughs> You're gonna make him play a third, so you know it ushers us to the World Cup. Right, right. Make. Make as much money from this as you possibly can. Right. No, but the, but having this the the but the Rose Bowl game, uh, not only was it uh, you know clearly a success, but the for, for the game to also be good. And, it was a great game. Yeah, and and Ricky, LAFC fans are like, we don't agree with we that. Don't, <laughs> was it wasn't that great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the only shame is that there's players missing. Whether it's Gold Cup or injury, right, right, if right. this was the season opener, it would have been cool to see everyone at full strength. Although Chicharito would have missed because it wasn't he not injured at the beginning of the season. Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, but look, it's for for. I, I mean, could you argue that the team looked better? That Ali Galaxy looked better without Chicharito? Like maybe there's a little bit of a little bit more freedom, or maybe more responsibility put on some of the other players. Um, That's a great question. But, but just for just for Ricky Puj to make that run. It wasn't a it wasn't a striker. It wasn't a a, a forward. Like it wasn't even another winger. No, it was very Lampard esque. My the man is to the it to was. the far post. Ricky Puj is what, and you would say an eight, right? I don't know. Or I don't uh, like to talk uh, about guys' looks. Let's <laughs> 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 respect. <laughs> no, yeah. man, we're we're very superficial <laughs> yeah. here yeah. on the goal. No, we will break you down, dude. <laughs> uh, well, I guess maybe he's not a ten. He's more of a ten than he is an eight. Or a six. I think he would love to play as an eight, but LA Galaxy uses him as a combo eight ten. Okay. 
Yeah. Also, you know, look, I know he tracks back, but I wouldn't say he spiritedly defends. No, no. I wouldn't say that either. No. Um, the, Am but, I tempering my words because the little LA Galaxy <laughs> boys are going to jump on my ass again? Baby, look, I, and I don't think it was LA Galaxy fans that were mad. It was Barcelona fans. Oh. This is who you pissed off. You pissed <laughs> off Barcelona. The list. Barcelona fans, it is. Will you slander any Barcelona player? Uh, you, that's it, bro. Wow, did I pull a lever? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I thought it was. By the way, one person defended us. And they go, stop, stop glazing him, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, bro, like yeah, yeah. He's like, dude, you're the one defending a mid uh, a mid midfielder. And they're like, you're defending mid podcast. <laughs> and I'm like, what a dumb internet back and forth this is. But thank you. Thanks for the engagement. We need the we need the cooligan stands out there yeah. fighting the good fight because some people are out here uh, are slandering us. Or, or we don't. just let the incels fight amongst themselves <laughs> until what? Top G drops another video <laughs> bro. that they can spray. Web too, <laughs> yo. And you take gonna be doing soccer concert from jail, bro. It's gonna be great. Uh, Hopefully, <laughs> the jail part, not the soccer concert. Um, okay, so uh, I, I want to talk about this. This is more of a, a, a serious uh, uh, issue, but the other uh, the, the, the video came out after the Mexico Qatar match uh, of uh, of a fight in the stands. There were a couple fights in the stands. There were a couple fights. In particular, fights. We, I, we, and you don't want it to be uh, as soon as you hear a couple, that's already too many, right? Just too many. Um, well, we were. I was in. I was at the Nations League match with Mexico, and there were fights everywhere. Right, right. That was a rough one. There was one directly underneath our suite. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, he's like perched. Oh, sorry. Under our suite. <laughs> My man is perched up on upon his yeah. ivory tower yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> watching them. And there were there was a lot of people wearing white gloves and tuxedos going la 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 so I didn't have to hear it <laughs> because I didn't want to be disturbed. Uh, uh, no, but there was a fight directly underneath us and we, I saw people looking but I couldn't see what was happening because directly underneath us and then someone who was on set, who, who had a clear view of it, showed me. It was horrific. Some guy threw somebody down like six rows. Whoa. It was insane. I mean, I'm like, why are you this upset? It's, a, it's, not, it's nothing new to, to be at a sporting event and see people fight, even people who are fans of the same team. Well, this is what it was. It seemed like it was a lot of U.S. and Mexico fans fighting each other because as a lot of the Europeans who were around us, like, wait, everyone's just mixed together. And I'm like, yeah, usually it's fine. And as I say that, like a bag of <laughs> is thrown past my face. Uh, but it was a lot of Mexico fans fighting Mexico fans. Yeah. And I, I think it's because of how rough of a loss that was against the U.S. that it caused a lot of like, you know, it's just uh, there has to be something that there seems to be. a, And obviously the issue that we're talking about is um, that there was a fight uh, and obviously a big scuffle. But then someone got stabbed. Someone stabbed a person. Not uh, like in the arm. This dude took it in the center of the chest. Yeah, it was not. It was horrific. It was really, really bad. And I mean, like, we're obviously not going to show the, the, the video or anything. How, do we know how this person is doing? I don't know. I, I mean, he was just standing up he's in just the video. Standing there. Just he's just like yeah, but when the yeah, adrenaline yeah, runs yeah. out, you've yeah, been stabbed yeah. in the I'm, chest. I'm hoping. <laughs> I haven't heard anything negative, uh, but I... I, I know truly, they arrested or they've at least identified the stabby or stabber. Sta yeah. Um, so look, look, we don't need to, you know, we don't need to tell people... Yo, don't be stabbing people like games because that's fairly <laughs> obvious. Um, but Maybe we do. I'm, oh my god, he's critically injured. Okay, jeez. I hope. Uh, I hope he's okay uh, and makes makes a full recovery. But police are looking for a person of interest. Okay. Um, it's yeah. It was uh, absolutely awful to see the simple fact that something like this could happen at a at a at a sporting event. Even you know, even in the United States, you would think that there is a, a lot of security. They 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 do bag checks. They do you know, you have to go through metal detectors to get uh, into any of these arenas. Uh, and for something like this to happen is very very concerning. It's definitely concerning to me. I mean, you, look, I <clears throat> I was at a game uh, recently, and I brought uh, I brought my son. He, he is he, he was like two and a two and a half months old at the time uh, at Yankee Stadium. And a fight broke out in uh, in the stadium. And it's like, even if I didn't have a kid there, I would still be like, yo, this is 
bad. But then the, it adds a huge layer of concern because I'm like, your sweet baby my, boy, my sweet baby <laughs> yeah. boy, and, uh, you know, it is now I have to make sure that, that you know, I'm like scurrying away. Thank from, God I wasn't there. You don't have to worry about your two sweet baby boys. <laughs> okay, and I can't carry Alexis. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're going to move the kid out of the way, bro. I need to be carried out of here. But it's stuff like that where you, you know, even in that thing, you see little kids around and obviously have to witness something like that. And, uh, you know, in the Mexico Qatar one, you see little kids around and it's, it's obviously very scary and it's clearly very dangerous. And, and they, there can't be any tolerance. I mean, it, there's already, there clear, uh, obviously appears to be a very uh, uh, difficult uh, situation with Mexico fans. You know, like I, I saw uh, after watching the video and you see the comments and there's a lot of Mexico uh, uh, fans in Mexico that are like, I would never go to a game in the U.S. because it's like, in, you know, too crazy, which is like, whatever. I mean, we've I mean, also that's seen- That's also an easy thing to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the the- the, the main thing is just like it's like the issue with the with a grito there, there just seems to be a lot of like defiance from the Mexico fans and a lot of like they're just unhappy with the team and, yeah, and a lot of this comes because of their frustration with yeah the and then within the fan base they get mad at each other and then now they start attacking each other because some people don't care about a grito and they want to say it and some people are like who, who are trying to police it and saying like yo stop doing that and they get mad at them or whatever. And then it's like, and then there's also beers and, and people are drunk or, or whatever. But this has to be the worst that it gets. This is just so awful to see. To, to wait, Yeah, even if it was just simply a fight where people are getting injured, but for someone to get actually stabbed at a game. And like the, in, the article in, said that he got stabbed in the collarbone. Yes. And it's a critical injury, which the video, if you see it, it shows him pretty aware and standing up and pretty normal but again that's adrenaline yeah yeah it's it's horrifying it's yeah, horrifying it's horrific so, how so much I, of this though is on CONCACAF I feel like at a certain point like CONCACAF has to acknowledge okay this is how the fans of lots of teams right not yeah, just yeah. Mexico if lots of teams behave you know when they're not doing well we need to actually do more to proactively prevent stuff like this from I happening. also think it's I mean I get that like the fans are chanting something homophobic Start to ban the fans. Yeah, I agree with that it. completely. A fan stabbing someone also deserves some type of ban. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, I mean I'm sorry that it's one fan that's going to ruin it for a lot. But no, nah, man, you bring a shank to the game and insert yeah. it in someone's well, shoulder. You, know, some people you now are not allowed to have fans at the game. Yeah. Someone said um, that the punishment should be to take away the World Cup for Mexico. And that is a, you know, that's a obviously a, a very big uh, a punishment. But... It, it, it's like this pressure. Johnny Fontino's like, I can't hear you over the cash machine, bro. <laughs> and it's all the, I'm so sorry. A Floyd Mayweather yeah. stack to yeah. his ear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's like this pressure cooker that, that CONCACAF won't turn the heat off of. Like, there there has to be well, some I mean, punishment. What what would be the punishment? I, I mean, I, it, it is, it's banning fans at matches, and if not... The problem with that is then stadiums won't want to carry the game because if those fans aren't allowed to go, you're not going to get sellouts, you're not going to sell concessions. But those stadiums also don't want stabbings happening yeah, inside yeah. their stadium. No, they, I get that, but the stadium just won't take the no, game if you I, say, yeah, like, I it's know, Mexico yeah. versus Qatar, well, then every, and Mexican fans aren't allowed to go, just Qatari then fans. Then maybe, <laughs> maybe the stadiums get a larger cut of, of the tickets sold for that, uh, for that event. I, I, you know, there has to be somebody has to take some sort of loss, and that look, it, it hurts the fans, it hurts, it hurts Concacaf, it hurts FIFA, but somebody has to make that decision of like we're gonna lose money so that we fix this problem, and somebody has to be brave enough to kind of make that decision, and it's difficult to 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 give up money, and that's probably why nothing's really. It's why done. nothing's <laughs> happening, especially well, when you're seeing things like the Canadian Federation is talking about filing for bankruptcy and, you know, right. the U.S. Federation not saying they're out of money or in any way, shape or form, but they're not as rich as they were before, you mm -hmm. know, uh, or at least don't have as many funds in the bank. These things are going to continue to happen in a place where money is earned, especially a, a federation or like a, the Mexican Federation where their teams do well in the stands. Yeah. Did you hear uh, the, at the, gate? the Mexican Federation that had two um, matches scheduled in uh, in like either in East, uh, I think it was either in Europe or Saudi Arabia. Like they were going to have two friendlies with international opponent, uh, opponents and they were going to play uh, in those countries and they canceled them because um, of the time zones. They said that it would affect them financially because the games would be on way too late or like, you know, in the middle of the night. 
So they're going to just play them in the U.S. And that's that, that seems to be the thing where like they not they don't want to play games on against, you know, on against different opponents that might give them, a, you know, a different look and might help the team improve in a certain way. And they're like, oh, no, let's just go to the U.S. because we're going to make money there. And that's I mean, I also kind of get that decision. I get that, too. But but it just highlights the focus is not necessarily on the quality of the of, of the sporting product. It is money first and then we'll see how the players do. Yeah, I mean, look, you saw what happened in one of the Mexican League matches, Querétaro versus Atlas. Yeah, yeah. You know, a horrific thing happened in the stands, and, you know, all official reports is nothing bad happened. Yeah. Just a couple of fights broke out, and we know completely It different. was much worse than that, yeah. So, uh, yeah, look, not not a great uh, situation, and I hope something gets done to, to move in a more positive direction, but I, I don't see how you um, progress in this without simply uh, setting some sort of line uh, some kind of boundary and saying like this is not going to be tolerated. Therefore, we are gonna uh, 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 financial. You know, uh, you have uh, to find a way to hurt the federation's pockets. There's a, yeah, there's no other way because yeah. they got all the all we get now are the, the the Mexican national team videos of players begging fans to stop saying the ch- screaming the champ and all right uh, and that's it. And they they're not. The more you ask them to stop. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. They because because, because they're doing they know, out of spite. They, but not just spite. They know they can impact the team. We're playing so badly. We're losing so badly mm-hmm. that if we yell this, at least they'll cancel the game. Yeah. You know, so that, you've kind of given them some power. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. All right. Um, the, I think especially it's important too because we've got leagues cup coming up. <laughs> it is quite <laughs> what a transition. <laughs> well, well, I wanted. I don't know how much time we have, but I wanted to get to one other thing before that. But well, we'll, well let's talk about leagues cup. Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> because we're gonna watch it. We're we're gonna enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's a great competition. But I'm not just gonna watch it. Just stand there all tense and worried. <laughs> I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna chill. And you know how I chill, Christian? Uh, how do you chill, Alexis? Oh, I'll tell you two ways. One. I just sit and relax. <laughs> and two, I keep an ice cold Coors Light in my hand. That's right. And there's going to be a lot of matches uh, for the League's Cup in 2023. This summer, there are going to be 77 games. There'll be 47 teams from three different countries. And obviously, the Messi show will be going on the road. Lionel oh. Messi will be playing his first uh, game uh, in League's Cup uh, with Inter Miami against Cruz Azul uh, on July 21st. Uh, and that's that's a big one. That's okay? going to be a huge. It's uh-huh. going to be huge for Cruz Azul. It's going to be huge for everyone involved. It's going to be huge for us. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be tuning in and obviously watching what the nice cold course like because that is always the move. And it's hot, bro. It is hot. But you know what? The can, it lets you know it's nice and cold. You know, a car doesn't tell you it's hot. You open the door, you're sitting and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> you know? How dare, how dare oh, you? You know? Why was this outside? <laughs> if there's only a way to bring it inside. <laughs> <laughs> but a can, the can of Coors Light, it says, wait, 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 wait. Before you pop this open, I want you to know. I want you to be so chill that I want you to even, not even question whether the contents inside are hot or cold because we got these cute little blue mountains. <laughs> oh, they're adorable. Oh, my God. And they say, hello, <laughs> your beer's cold. Okay. You take a sip. You put, you rest it against your forehead. Ah. Uh, it is absolute perfect this summer. So this summer, stay passionate and stay refreshed with an ice cold Coors Light, official beer of League's Cup 2023. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. That's CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Uh, also, check our Instagram because there's a, a, a contest uh, where you could go to the, the League's Cup final yes. as well. Ooh. Check it out. Check out the Coors Light post. Got a big silver bullet right on the post. That's right. At Soccer Cooligans. Just check that out on Instagram if you would uh, like. Uh, uh, Sign all, up. Sign all, up for a chance. Yeah. Yeah, all expense paid trip to the League's Cup uh, final. All right. Come on. You want to go to the League's Cup final? Not bad a pocket, baby. Let's go. Um, all right. The, uh, let's, let's get to our uh, conversation with, uh, with Tom Penn. Again, he is the, uh, the CEO of the new San Diego franchise that will be starting in 2025 in Major League Soccer. Uh, so, uh, you know, nice little, nice little business conversation. You know? That's you, right. You know, we might have we helped him with the marketing for the new team. The marketing. <laughs> of course. I also gave him a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Right? This is where you you come to this show for your 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 soccer financial advice. This is a business show, dude. <laughs> okay. I mean, Franklin Leonard and Tom Penn in back to back weeks, bro. bro we're stepping bro. up our game, baby. Jim Kramer's coming next. We bro. just need Zuck on the show. <laughs> How can we help with threads? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's our conversation uh, with San Diego CEO Tom Penn. 
What an honor to Absolutely. have this next guest. Very much We so. should have worn suits and brought a briefcase. <laughs> I feel deeply underdressed. I feel like I should be on, like, you know, a Shark Tank right now, bro, <laughs> bringing an executive in here. I want to start pitching ideas. Yeah, I, I, I'm starting to feel like my net worth is not where it needs to be <laughs> right? to do All this All I interview. know is to talk about NFTs, bro. <laughs> this isn't good. I got no money, you know? Uh, but this gentleman, uh, not, I mean... Harold did in both fields, really kind of did what we do a little bit and also has a background that allows him to not okay. just be smart, but also purchase. He's a uh, comedian and then pivoted into soccer. Yes. Wow. No, cool. he was a TV analyst and he was brought in uh, to talk a lot about sort of what goes on behind the scenes for executives uh, on ESPN. But now he is also the owner of the newest MLS franchise. Ladies and gentlemen, co-owner of your San Diego MLS franchise, Tom Penn, everybody! Tom, what's up, man? Man, I didn't know that wearing a collared golf shirt <laughs> was going to be so disruptive. Sorry. I, <laughs> I just It's just the, the caliber of, uh, of uh, people we have on the show. It's, they're usually people in, like, you know, they, they just stepped out of a sauna or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. The athletes. It's a little bit different. But we no. don't get many people calling us from their villas, dude. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> uh, Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, obviously, um, the, the, the recent news, uh, you know, we saw the announcement of uh, San Diego being awarded uh, the next MLS expansion uh, franchise. It, this, it, it's exciting news. And we know, you know, we, it, it's feeling like... You you just did this a couple years ago, yeah. right? With LAFC, so You're it's doing like, it again, huh? <laughs> running it back. <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing the you know the the, the sequel of uh, of your job. Um, but l let's just kind of start there the, with with this announcement. Um, what what's this process like right now? What's it look like in in the next few years of uh, of your maybe day to day uh, uh, work and and just how you're feeling and and you know doing this doing this again. Yeah, super pumped up. Thanks. Pleasure to be on you guys' show. Is that what we call this? Is this <laughs> yeah. yeah I think Some so. would. Some. <laughs> My <Yeah>. mother wouldn't. <laughs> but uh, And I appreciate the promotion to owner that you gave me. I am actually... We have just a CEO. CEO. I, was, I, was, I thought Lexus knew something Buddy, I didn't. I, I have a picture of a lot of people in front of me, and I'm <laughs> like, he's got to be one of these guys. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Whatever. Let's go with it. No. Uh, so... Look, it's awesome. San Diego is the number one spot on the planet to add a soccer team, right? If you think about it, for a variety of reasons, it's the number one soccer market in the country. And then by a few measures, I mean, produces most players on the national team, just a hotbed of talent. And then over indexes on interest when it's on TV, like when the U.S. national team's on, San Diego is always like right at the top in terms of overall interest then you layer in the mexican national team that's a whole nother element right down here in this neighborhood so you've just got huge interest in in football and then the padres are the only you know big five major league team so it's 3.3 million people and the chance to do an expansion team in a market that just loves the sport needs another alternative so for me it was a no-brainer to look down the Interstate 5 from L.A. to San Diego and come down here. And frankly, I found the only place with better weather than L.A. It's here. <laughs> yeah. That's it certainly so true. No, we've, uh, nice. we, yeah. yeah, we've uh, we've done stand up in San Diego. Yeah. And it's just like I, I performed at the, the comedy store in La Jolla. Same. Uh, and it's just so fun. It's like literally one of the more fun places that I think it's not like in, uh, you know, undiscovered it's san diego i mean yeah, people know people about know it, about it. <laughs> but i even in uh, the the entertainment scene the comedy scene there is is pretty dope uh uh as well but when it yeah. comes to uh, it's i like that you, you mentioned the you know it, like it, it's it's one of the markets where people watch it the most for, for watch soccer the most and it, it's interesting or maybe it's just my northeastern new york elite bias i'm like oh I, it just does you don't initially think of san diego as like a hotbed of american soccer but maybe you know this is our, our opportunity to learn about that if you look at player development and the players produced from here men and women they uh, over index amount of these kids come up through the system here and, and it makes sense there's a lot of green grass and a lot of sunshine and you can play year round and it's just become the culture of this place 
is to produce players. And our whole project is all about player development and taking that to the next level for the national team. You know, we want to produce the best American players we can using the right to dream way, which we could, you know, those are the, my partners on this and the, uh, the lead owners on this own right to dream. And uh, they're the best, among the best on the planet at developing young talent. So that's what's cool about this project. I mean, we're going to do a really cool execution of an MLS team for San Diego, by San Diego, you know, the modern way in MLS, which will be awesome. And we're going to produce the best players in the country, which is really cool. You a lot, And this is what's really important. And you as a CEO, I think, have been pushing this message as well, is how strong of a link to the community you want this team to have and have the feeling of the community. And just from having performed in San Diego, my feeling of the community is that everyone is on recess. It's just a very <laughs> relaxed city. There, no, there doesn't seem like anything. anyone takes anything serious. It's just a chill. Hey, buddy, relax. We don't use our car horns down here. What are you going to do, make every seat a lawn chair in the stadium? How are you going to get this across? <laughs> you know, you're kind of right. What I'm talking about this market isn't that they're on recess, but these people know how good they got it. They do. And they're, and they're grateful for it. Like there's a sense of gratitude that we've heard from the community. Like you go around New York, Philly, wherever, you, you know, Boston, nobody's like, oh, I'm so grateful to live here. It's like, <laughs> no, we're, we're grinding through it. We're going to get through it, do our stuff. Here it's like there's a real appreciation for how great life is. And then they're still getting stuff done. There's like the, there's an innovative edge to San Diego that is really unusual. So because of bioscience and all the bio life stuff down here, this community is, produces the most patents per capita in the country. All kinds of patents and, and then military innovation has been going on forever. The Navy yeah, SEALs are here. Cop Gun is here like the best of the best in the military comes through and out of San Diego. So th there's a innovative cutting edge that's like m mashed up with this, like, yeah, let's go surf, let's go skate, yeah. let's go create <laughs> something cool. All that is put together. And it's the number one micro brewing craft brewing, uh, enterprise down here which is sort of yeah, shocking. part of relaxation that. well yeah yeah and that's and also uh, brewing and, and micro brewing is a huge part of mls culture i don't know how much you've met a lot of supporters yeah. but man it is part of the identity i'll give you a quick insight as to how east coast i am and how little i know about the west coast i stayed in a hotel with my wife right on the water in pacific beach or pb as they call it because they can't say the whole name because it takes too long <laughs> they're too relaxed uh and it's beautiful. The, the hotel has three numbers is the name. Anyway, it's nighttime. I see a bunch of people changing into what looks like the gear you would wear to, like, rob the biggest diamond from, like, you know what I mean? Just, uh, yeah. And I say, I, I closed the windows. I told my wife, like, yo, we're about to get raided, bro. We're about to blah, blah. And my wife's like, what are you talking about? And I look out the window. And she goes, oh, they're going to go night surfing. These are guys changing into surfing gear. I thought yeah, that yeah. people were going to get grappling hooks and come into our hotel I just love, I love when Alexis is afraid, he starts calling his wife bro. That's just like, <laughs> Everybody gets bro <laughs> We're about to get invaded, dude. I do want to ask, are there going to be burritos with french fries in the, in the stadium? Oh, 100%. Yeah, that's okay. it. <laughs> Everyone can relax now. Okay, good. yeah, I was, I was very, very concerned. <laughs> that is necessary if you're going to be in San Diego. Well, also, I mean, and I know it might, it might be, a, it's a difficult topic, but obviously, you know, we have... Uh, it's a big market. There's other teams Big there. market. There's other teams and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we've, we've received uh, a lot of love and a lot of support from uh, San Diego loyal fans. Also Cholos. Yeah, yeah. Cholos and stuff like that. So, and what, what um, aspect or... I don't know how much you can necessarily share on on I don't know if it's about working with the team or or acknowledging just obviously the the development of the the, the growth of the soccer community there um, but what is uh, how much of a factor is it to I don't know be, work or collaborate with San Diego Loyal in some way you know huge six huge props to the Loyal for what they've done they launched a club and it ended up then COVID hit and so they launched it through COVID, which is like nearly impossible. And they've done such a good job of engaging the community and of doing what you're supposed to do. 
Um, and so I've had huge respect for them, huge respect for the wave, the San Diego wave, yeah, the women's huge. team has come in and just blown the doors off of NWSL, set all kinds of attendance records and continue to draw and create a cool uh, professional environment there. And that's in the same stadium where we're going to be. So when you put all those factors together, it's, it's more of an indication for the appetite of football in San Diego. Then you throw in the Cholos right across the border, and we've got this baked-in opportunity to have a really cool kind of rivalry collaboration. And you know with MLS, we're partnering with Liga Mex on the League's Cup. So we're right in the, we're right in the mixer of where we want to take soccer in North America. So we just want to come slot into this community and do our part as the premium offering in the men's game and see how it all sequences and shakes together. But there's all sorts of opportunity for cool stuff. Yeah, I'm excited about the, obviously, you know, the the, the rivalry of simply a U.S. Open Cup match, let's say, of, uh, you know, whatever, loyal versus whatever the San Diego team. Derbies are good for the sport. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, uh, yeah, Yeah. and, and it... Kind of goes into my next question because we've seen a few comments. I want to get your thoughts maybe on, on Open Cup a little bit because we've I've seen comments from uh, MLS executives about kind of saying like the competition the competition doesn't meet the sort of standard that that MLS teams should try to like strive for and things like that. What are your thoughts on Open Cup and that kind of competition just uh, continuing to exist? It's been a huge challenge as. MLS is evolving, League's Cup comes on, we have more international competition, more high-level competition. I mean, U.S. Open Cup's got to up their game. It's got to become really relevant. I mean, I love the idea of an open competition that gives the lower division clubs the opportunity to compete and advance and win a trophy. At the MLS level, it's just a real challenge because those matches slot in midweek. You don't get any real warning on who the opponent's going to be. You don't know whether it's home or away. It's a coin flip. I mean, it's, it's all sorts of randomness that becomes really difficult to manage when you're operating a professional club with a full-on schedule and everything else. And then it's hard to get your audience to care if it's not sort of a, viewed as a major professional thing. So I I think there's work to do there, and the competition now is fierce, and the landscape is more complicated with uh, the interjection of these other competitions. Because I can tell you this, that League's Cup is going to be cool. When you're talking to all the League of Mex teams against all the MLS clubs with real stuff on the line, that's going to be fun to watch. Okay. Tom, you used to be an agent, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're the CEO of uh, of the newest of the newest franchise, a guy, a guy by the name of Lionel Messi. You might have heard of him. He's uh, <laughs> coming into the league. Imagine he didn't. Move. Imagine he's like, who's that guy? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me look at him. Yeah, up. he's like, a guy this short plays a sport? No, I think he, obviously you know who he is. Um, I'm just adding a little filler there. But you used to be an agent. So you have already have the idea of like getting players into teams. So your brain must work in that way as well. Do you feel the pressure seeing a Lionel Messi come into this league and the buzz that's created, do you feel the pressure to try to find a big, big star for San Diego FC, if that's the full team name? No, we felt it for L.A. We knew that at LAFC we needed to have a signature player and a star because of the nature of that market and how cluttered and crowded it is and just to to register And that's why we looked for Carlos Vela as sort of a signature guy that we could hang our hat on. In San Diego, I don't feel the pressure to do that because I feel like we have a different approach to this with our affiliation with Right to Dream. We really, our goal is to be the Ajax of North America, to be this club that's just so great at player development and wins with youth. So that doesn't necessarily jive with bringing you know, I won't say the next Messi because there's not another one of those, but that doesn't necessarily jive with bringing this Zlatan type name and talent, you know, to build around. We want to build from the ground up with youth and this clear identity of just, holy shit, that another 19 year old came along and is so amazing. And we, 
you know, win with that 19, 20, 21 year old and then they move on. That's eventually. In the short term, yeah, we need to have a more blended team that can be competitive right out of the shoot. And we may very well have a really good Mexican talent as part of the, you know, array of designated players or signature players, if you will. But I don't feel the pressure to go get Neymar, for example, because it seems like more are coming. And that would fit for other clubs, maybe. But if, I mean, Neymar, so, if Neymar wants to come, we'll talk to him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're not going to really So what I, I hear you saying is you want to build the next Messi, not go buy the next Messi. Oh, very nice. Uh, <laughs> free marketing. There you go, a little dime. <laughs> uh, boom. Okay, that'll be like the, yeah. that's the caption for the, the the San Diego versus Inter-Miami match coming up. So, yeah, right, go for it. Uh, uh, the it, It's a... Uh, I, we got some questions from uh, from fans from our uh, from Gully Club, which is our, basically our Patreon members, our most dedicated fans. And um, uh, Stephanie, who I, I believe is an LAFC fan, uh, mm. just asked the question: How does it feel to know that the three two five two is going to boo you whenever we see you? How do you feel? Uh, about they, that? Will, they will <laughs> never do that. They love, <laughs> they love me. I love them. That was a, that was a match made in Hollywood. No, we look. I I do love the thirty two fifty two man. That was the biggest challenge trying to figure out how to embrace the LA audience and let them figure out how to express what they became. And watching that happen was just like awesome. I'm so like there's a soft spot in my heart for the thirty two fifty two. But look, we we're doing the same down here now. We're we're in the wouldn't say in the trenches. We're at the we're at the beginning stages of really working on all these relationships with the founders of what's going to become San Diego's version of that. I have no idea what they're going to name themselves. I have no idea how that's all going to come together. But I do feel the intention down here to do that, and uh, the- it's going to be that. That's the that's the wild card in all this that creates the most freaking fun. Yeah, yeah, the the other thing I want to ask you do thirty two fifty three. Just really mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> psychology. This, game, this is you know what this is a a, a, a San Diego FC meeting. This is a, like, marketing a marketing meeting we've, we've, for you. This accom- is a tax write off for you. <laughs> we've Tom. accomplished so much today. Um, <laughs> the other thing I want to ask um, is about that the, the you know part of the uh, ownership group is uh, working with the the the. the um, uh, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Sikwan National Tribe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sikwan. Sikwan. Okay. Is, yep. Yeah, and it's a. Uh, I'm I'm curious about the 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 work involved uh, uh, with that because I, I you know I went to um, you know I went to Arizona and I I went uh, to uh, uh, you know a, a lot of the different reservations and I got really got to learn a lot and and I it's something I. You know, it was like a shame that I didn't like learn more about uh, the history in school and stuff like that. And it was a really uh, great to be kind of immersed uh, in that history and culture. Uh, but yeah. w- as far as building a soccer team, and I know that they're involved in, in a lot of uh, things in San Diego. But what, uh, what for you, what's it been like uh, working with them? Amazing. So it's the Saquon tribe and they're actually the co-owners of this thing. So it's a joint venture with Mr. Mohammed Mansoor, who owns Right to Dream and with the Saquon Native American family, the tribe. And so they're a fascinating group of people that have been given this opportunity to establish an entertainment business and have a casino as their primary source of revenue. And they've, they started with a bingo hall. They were the best at bingo back in the day, like 40 plus years ago. Amazing. And they, (laughs) and, and, and they became, uh, and, and a number of other tribes in this region, it's, there are quite a few tribes with gambling or gaming licenses, but Saquon was just the best at it. And then in the mid-20-teens, they ended up deciding to do like a $300 million expansion, and they built like a little mini Vegas resort. Awesome pools, great entertainment, and they really more than doubled down on the concept. And then... From all of that, they've just continued to grow and diversify their holdings. They own a really cool hotel downtown called the U.S. Grant Hotel. They own other things, and they wanted to diversify. And instead of sponsoring sports teams, they wanted to co-own. So they'll be the first Native American family sitting at the board table in one of the big five leagues. It's awesome. 
That's yeah. going to be incredible. And, and again, a nod to you guys for continuing to be a part of the community, not just the immediate community, but some of the original communities there. It's absolutely they are awesome. the community. I mean, they're the original inhabitants of the yeah. land. They've, they can trace back 12,000 years they've been on the land. So it doesn't get any more local than that. Incredible. I do want to ask one last question. This is from David Me uh, Meyer, who's another uh, fan of ours. Uh, obviously, he mentions how much MLS has grown over the last 10 to 15 years. You're one of the newer teams. Uh, you've been a part of one of the newer teams. You come in, newer teams tend to do it a little differently. The question kind of references, what do you think uh, some of these newer teams have learned from some of the older ones? And sort of talk a little bit about that divide between some of the newer ones that are a little bit more flashy and some of the older teams that are starting to catch up. Well, commercially, what happens with the newer ones is you're able to just kind of reinvent what new stadiums. There's always like sort of new stadiums, new ventures, new market. So you can really push all of that innovation for the league. What you learn is supporter culture and history. And like I looked so hard at the Timbers Army and at what they do in Seattle and so on. In my era, we really had to try to nail the execution of our supporter culture and there was nowhere to look but within the league at who was doing it best. And my experience in Portland was I was the enlightened American fan when I went to a Portland Timbers game with my kids and they looked up at me and they go, Dad, this is awesome. And I was like, this is awesome. When I saw the <laughs> Timbers army just roaring in the north end, I'm like, holy shit, I didn't know we could do that. So we wanted to replicate that in L.A. That's what we learned from them and listened as to how they do that. So and since then, what you've seen is in Austin and in St. Louis and in Nashville, you know, with expansion comes fresh energy and fresh expression. And that's what's been really driving the league. So we want to do our part and continue to do that. All right. I hope the, the the owners that have been around, the legacy owners, have are open to some of the ideas. You know, add a, add a couple DPs, maybe raise the salary cap. Let's have a little fun. The next here. meeting, just bring some Werther's Originals for some of the old <laughs> curmudgeons, <laughs> you know, who don't want to pay attention to the new ideas. Okay. Well, maybe we could bring you guys in as like a marketing consultant. You've helped me. <laughs> I think you are you are filled with amazing <laughs> ideas, Tom. You got the right idea. Okay, all right. We're we're working together. We're trying to all improve American soccer in yes. our own way. You have a collared <laughs> shirt required for the board. Meeting. But I will drill a collar onto this shirt. You believe me? I will find a way. <laughs> uh, Tom Penn, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck uh, again with uh, with the expansion project. We're excited. Uh, you know, uh, it's it, what twenty twenty four. Five? When, when yeah. 25. 25. 25. We got um, so, uh, real quick, how many years before the Knicks win a championship? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer. You just answered. Damn, man. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Tom, thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah, and best of luck uh, with everything uh, out in San Diego, man. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time. All right, guys. Thanks. Another incredible interview here. Shout on out. On the Cooligans Business Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's, it's the Cooligans, buddy. Because we, we should get uh, Poppy saying, like, it's the Cooligans Business uh, Podcast. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> uh, but no, shout out to Tom. The Pen sounds of a, of a briefcase unlatching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This guy means business. <laughs> Damn. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got briefs in that briefcase? <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> so, so uh, Tom, <laughs> you were so proud of yourself. <laughs> so uh, thank you, uh, Tom Penn, uh, for joining us. Uh, uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, conversation. Thank you uh, again for joining us. The, if you enjoyed that, hit the subscribe button. Uh -huh. that's, that's that's the move, okay? Because you are uh, you're you're literally taking food off my baby's uh, you know ta table. Sweet baby Mateo and sweet baby Alexis, <laughs> who Christian has vowed to protect forever. Uh, they need your as if I'm not one of them. Need your you hit the subscribe button, or else you're literally ripping food out of that baby's mouth. Correct. Uh, so look, you, I, I, we're not here to make you feel bad. No. But if you feel bad, then maybe that says you might be doing something a little bit wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't feel bad because I'm not guilty like you. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? All right. So hit that subscribe button, subscribe to the podcast, and tell a friend. All 
All right, everybody. And look, if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. Just hit the subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice alternative. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, we, look, uh, we, we give you options here. Yeah. yeah. We're not, don't make me explain it to you, boomer. What do you think? We're rigid people? <laughs> no. No, we're all about it. All right. A, B, and C. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much again for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with a brand new episode. We're excited to keep things moving. Uh, a lot to Are you going to talk like that? We're back on Monday. We're so excited. <laughs> uh, keep it moving. A lot to look forward to. Obviously, MLS All-Stars coming up. Uh, so, so is the Women's World Cup. So we got uh, a bunch of fun stuff planned. So stay Tune. Got some fun guests. Not going to tell you who they are over the mm, next few weeks. You're going to want to look out. It's none of your business who they are, okay? <laughs> you got to make sure you hit the subscribe button and make yeah. sure you see. Maybe you would know had you hit the subscribe button. <laughs> thought of that. Bro, wow. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, maybe it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> a two viewer and listener. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in a few days. Peace, everybody. Love you guys.